This conference will now be recorded. I'm going to call the regular council meeting of my 15th order. Mayor Johnson? Here. Councilmember Kane? Here. Councilmember Mitchell? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Noak is excused, as is Councilmember Walchek. Um, please rise for the pledge. The pledge pledge of allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, approval of the agenda. Make a motion to approve the agenda as written. Okay. Any modification? Oops, I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Anna, <laughs> jumped on your toes. Uh, Mayor Johnson? Aye. Councilmember Kane? Aye. Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Any modifications? Oh, agenda? We'll pull that when we get to it. Yeah, so um, that one's on that list that I gave you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and that one is to okay so you want to do that now okay so um we will remove um item 7a from bills to be allowed on the consent agenda and place it under new business 14b that's the motion that's the motion i i second i can make sure i get the right word out there councilmember kane aye councilmember mitchell aye and mayor johnson aye Anything else? Mm -hmm. so. um, approval of the minutes. Any questions or concerns? No. No I, questions. I just have one correction, and we won't take a roll call on it. But under um, the reimagined River Center, it mm -hmm. said um, that we um, approved a new director. We approved a new direction. So, mm -hmm. so <clears throat> Anna will make that. Yes. Modification. So we're up to public comment. Um, citizens appearing before council on agenda and non-agenda items. Items will have will be allowed a maximum of five minutes each to address their concerns. This is the only time during a council meeting that citizens are allowed to address the council. Please come to the podium, state your name, and address. And online comments will be accepted after in-person comments are completed. All comments should be directed to the to council and not to the audience. Anyone? Kevin Ginter, 390 South Lawn in Alpena. I know sometimes I'm not the smartest tool in the shed. <laughs> I think I notice like microphones and speakers. It's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Anyone else? Okay, we have no public hearing, so we're moving on to the consent agenda. Um, so A is cast the following votes to the Michigan Municipal League Workers' Compensation Fund Board of Trustees for a four-year term beginning October 1st, 2024. Victor Cardenas, City Manager, City of Novi, Daniel Kraw, City Administrator, City of DeWitt, and Bridget Dean, Mayor City of Berkeley, and B, approved the fiscal year 25 school liaison agreement with Alpena Public Schools. I move we approve the consent agenda. I will second. <laughs> Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Mayor Johnson? Aye. Councilmember Kane? Aye. Motion carried. And now we're to presentations. Um, we have the Huron Humane Society semi-annual report and Mary Egan um, with HHS is here to um, give us the report. Hello. Hello. Well, I am not going to read word for word the report. I trust you all have it and, and have reviewed it, um, but I'll just go over some of the, the key points. We're again in the midst of kitten season at the shelter, a result of a combination of irresponsible pet ownership and the uncontrolled feral pet, uh, cat population. HHS has taken in 106 kittens through June 30th, 87 adult cats for a total of 193 cats through June 30th, 
We've also taken in cats from two hoarding cases so far this year, one of which was in the city of Alpena. For that hoard, we worked with the Alpena City Police, the Sheriff's Department, and other animal shelters in the area to help house, care, and find new homes for all the animals affected. HHS alone took in 16 cats and kittens, many of whom, the, the adult cats, and by adult I mean over six months of age, uh, gave birth at the shelter to kittens um, one, the very next day. And, and one of those was an orange cat that we thought was male because most orange cats are male. So that was a big surprise. A huge number of those animals were in ill health when they were admitted to the shelter, which means that they needed veterinary care. In the first four months of this year alone, HHS has spent a few cents shy of $19,000 on veterinary care alone. Last year in 2023, HHS spent about $55,000 in veterinary bills. This does not include in-house testing, vaccinations, and the preventative medicine we perform at the shelter. We've also taken in 10 dogs, 22 puppies through June 30th. That's a total of 32 dogs. And the cost to care for, house, feed, test, vaccinate, and provide veterinary care for our residents has cost HHS $98,000, almost $99,000, just in the first four months of the year alone. HHS continues to have solid adoption rates with 179 of the 225 animals we've served at the shelter this year so far being adopted. 10 have been returned to their owners. We are making a host of improvements at the shelter to make it a, a better place for the animals and workers alike. We're building a new website that will make connecting with HHS online easier and more educational. We continue to partner with the Bissell Pet Foundation for reduced free adoption, reduced fee adoptions. We continue to stock a pet food pantry for people struggling to feed their pets. And we donate our expired pet food, which by law we cannot feed to the animals at the shelter. We donate that to Nature's Kingdom Wildlife Rehab. And that way the animals there get sustenance. And uh, I know Nature's Kingdom also needs that desperately. It's always hard to run a nonprofit. Continuing to partner with PetSmart to get cats adopted. That's another thing HHS does. And we are starting a new microchip program for newly adopted cats that will offer free chips to customers of HHS. We're starting the program off with 100 chips and we'll see how it goes. We're the biggest and most established no-kill animal shelter in the region. And we have animals in our care 365 days a year and only closed to the public on Sundays, major holidays, and on the rare occasions when we have to close for the health and safety of our animals. And sadly, we had to close for one of those rare health emergencies when panleukopenia, also known as feline distemper, got into the shelter through an infected cat in late May. Up to 40 cats, most of them kittens, were affected and our staff had to go into extreme infection control protocol to contain that infection. Because of this, we had to close the shelter to the public to concentrate solely on the animals. I'm happy to report that the epidemic at the shelter is over thanks to great veterinary care and the tireless work and discipline of our staff. Those interested in getting involved can help in a variety of ways. We've partnered again with the Bissell Pet Foundation again this month to offer a special adoption event. Until the end of the month, eligible cats and kittens will have a base adoption fee of $25, while eligible dogs and puppies will have a $50 base adoption fee. So all of you in the audience looks like you could do with a cat. So if you wanna stop by, we'll, we'll make that happen. We have plenty. I think the census right now is about 68. So share your time and talents by volunteering at HHS. You can do anything from socializing kittens to doing maintenance on the building. You can shop at Retail's Boutique inside the Huron Humane Society. Donate supplies like laundry soap and bleach and canned cat food. We go through a lot of canned cat food. You can make monetary donations or create a Facebook fundraiser for the animals. You can sponsor the adoption fee of one of the older residents at the shelter. Everybody wants a kitten or a puppy, but we have other residents who would make wonderful family pets. You can cut some grass. Do you like to cut grass? We've got grass. It's expensive to pay someone to do this and having a staff member do it takes time away from the animals.
Donate your bottles and cans to HHS. You can simply drop off bagged returnables outside the shelter any time of the day or night. And you can advocate in our community for HHS. It's so important to remember that without the Huron Humane Society, last year, 530 animals would have been homeless. They would have reproduced. We would have had more of a feral cat population. So HHS does serve a very, very, very special place in our community. And um, it, it really supports the health and uh, safety of people and animals. We're heartened with the support of the city of Alpena. 225 animals who have resided at our shelter within the city limits this year have been tested, treated, vaccinated, and either have been or will be surgically sterilized, which will pay huge dividends in the community for years to come. We thank the city of Alpena so much, its staff and management, the Alpena City Police Department is always wonderful to deal with. Um, we, your support makes such a difference in our community and it's greatly appreciated. We never take it for granted. And we would love to show you around the shelter. That goes for everyone here in the audience. We are open Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. and you are welcome at any time. And again, we have a lot of kittens. If you'd like a kitten, we can hook you up. Any questions? Does anyone have questions for Madam? Thank you so much, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to receive and file the HHS report. I'll make that motion. Second. Mayor Johnson? Yes. Councilmember Kane? Aye. And Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Okay. Next up, we have Chief Edmonds, um, and he's going to do a retire retirement recognition for Captain Tim Slosser. Good evening. Captain Tim Slosser began his career with the Alpena City Fire Department on April 7th, 1998 as a paramedic firefighter. Prior to starting his employment with us, he gained experience working for 11 years with the Schwartz Creek Area Fire Department and Paramed AMR. Combined, he has approximately 37 years of community service. Tim has always been actively involved in department operations in ways that many might not be aware of, including special projects to ensure that we are operationally ready to meet the community's needs. He handled many of our ambulance bids for purchases, cardiac monitor purchases, striker power load and cot system purchases, maintenance details for apparatus and equipment, portable and mo mobile radio installations, and rig upfitting. Tim was trained in several specialty disciplines, including being one of our critical care paramedics. He was trained in confined space rescue, hazardous materials technician, water and ice rescue. He was a member of the child death review committee and a member of our honor guard detail. Tim served in multiple command roles within our department throughout the years, being promoted to the rank of lieutenant and serving the past five years as a shift captain. Tim has been an asset to our success and will be greatly missed as it is not just the retirement of an employee, but the retirement of many years of experience, knowledge and skills and abilities that is difficult to replace. It is my pleasure to recognize Captain Tim Slosser for his 26 years of dedicated service to the community and to the Alpena City Fire Department. And we wish Tim his wife Tina many years of health and prosperity as he enters this next chapter in life. I'm just listening to the meeting as it goes. Um, the service recognition is, is presented to Captain Paramedic Tim Slosser for your 26 years of dedicated service to the city of Alpena, the county of Alpena, and the Alpena City Fire Department as a paramedic and fire captain. Your commitment and dedication to our team to ensure public safety in fire, EMS, and specialty incidents is greatly appreciated. April 7th, 1998 to July 11th, 2024. We did purchase him a retirement ax and his shift actually put it on a plaque with him with all of his uh, uh, helmet shields. So it was quite large, it's about four foot in, in size. So <laughs> not bring it, but we did give him that presentation on his very last day at the station. So thank, thank you. you. Up to announcements. Um, A, the term for mayor and two council members work will expire on December 31st, 2024. The deadline for city candidates who are nominated by petition to the November general election is July 23rd, 2024, 
at 4 p.m. Nonpartisan nominating petitions and affidavits of identity forms are available in the city clerk's office. B, absentee ba ballots are available in the city clerk's office. C, early voting will begin on July 27, 2024. Nope, back up. Will begin on Saturday, July 27, 2024, and will continue through Sunday, August 4th from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Charter Township of Alpena, located at 4385 U.S. 23 North. If preferred, absentee ballots can be taken to the early if preferred, absentee ballots can be taken to the early voting site to be processed at, in the tabulator by the voter. Um, D, the clerk treasurer, treasurer's office will be open on Saturday, August 3rd, 2024, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. for voters to register to vote and request an absentee ballot. And E, summer taxes are due by July 31st, 2024, to avoid interest and penalty fees. Postmarks are not accepted. Anybody else had any announcements, but <laughs> I, th I think you did well. Um, so we're up to um, um, mayor mayoral proclamation, and this is for Michigan brown trout. After I finish this, everybody can come up here and we'll get a picture. Okay. So this proclamation, whereas the nonprofit organization known as the Michigan Brown Trout Festival has been, has been incorporated since 1975 with a purpose to highlight the aquatic resources of Thunder Bay area and whereas the Michigan Brown Trout Festival is composed of numerous community support organizations and individuals who have generously given of their time and effort to make this festival a continuing success. And whereas the festival, festival draws <clears throat> People from around the state, Midwest, and other points in North America enjoy the best of what Alpena and the waters of Lake Huron have to offer. And whereas the Michigan Brown Trout Festival hosts numerous activities for children and adults of all ages, including educational fishing, sport fishing, teen dances, veteran night, and plenty of food and live music. And whereas the Michigan Brown Trout Festival is held the third full week in July, plus the weekends at both ends out of the small boat harbor in downtown area. This is this is the, being the 50th annual festival and recognizing this event as the longest running Fresh Lake fishing tournament and festival in history. And whereas the community would like to recognize and thank the founding members, Lanny Kingsbury, Jim Boldry, Jack McCoy, Chuck Shifley, and Don Bartosh. Now, therefore, I, Cindy Johnson, by the virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Alpena, do by here proclaim July 18th to the 28th, 2024, as Michigan Brown Trout Festival Week in Alpena and urge all area citizens to recognize and support the efforts of the volunteers who, compromise, who comprise the Michigan Brown Trout Festival. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody come up here and we'll get a picture. Can you come in and stop this? Yeah, I'm not going in. Thank you. Are you Mr. Bartosz? I am. This is the first search for the fifth year. I get the second one. Mr. Walder. Thank you. Thank you. So everyone wants to come up here and we'll get the picture and we'll present you a proclamation that we just read. Just everybody. Okay. Thank you. Here's the one you gave me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Great job. We're going to set up the work. I'm just an old man. I resemble that remark. We're down to report of officers. <clears throat> oh, Anna's already up here. <clears throat> okay, fourth quarter, Anna Soy. Gotcha. Okay. Sir. <clears throat> 
this is the quarterly report at June 30th, 2024, which should be at 100% of our budget. Uh, in the green section, Steve, <laughs> is the revenue. And we are at 84%, 84.3% for total revenue. Um, in the variances for public safety, it's a little bit low at 87%. Oh, I should clarify that this is incredibly preliminary at June 30th because um, we have until the end of August to. Oh, that has to be open. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so we have until the end of August to accrue back revenue and expenditures for anything that, um, like if we received something by the end of June, uh, if we um, had a service that we performed or a service that was rendered, those types of things, we move them back. So we still have a lot of that to come through yet, so a lot still has to hit this budget. So for public safety, they're at 87.48% for revenues so far received. And that's because the annual accrual for ambulance transport fees has not been entered. Last year, it was 388,000. Um, so just to give you an idea. For public works, it's a little bit low at 92%. And that is due to lower sales of compost in DPW and also burial lots in the cemetery. Community and economic development is very low at 37.8%. We had budgeted 50,500 for ordinance fines and costs. Um, we did receive 50,000. This is for that demo of that house on Lake Street. We did receive money um, from the state as a grant for that, but we didn't put it in this function or in, in the planning department. We put it into general government. Um, but this is actually budgeted for if the homeowner paid for it, um, which she still is, it's a lien against the house. Um, we only received $2,445 of um, that budget. For recreation and culture, we're at 14.89%. Um, we have grants and donations that have not been received. And transfers in is at... 0.35%, and the majority of this is for ARPA projects, um, particularly the Bayview restrooms at 700,000 and 190,000 we budgeted for a city hall windows. So none of those projects have been um, started or completed in fiscal year 24. Um, so it's gonna have to get carried forward to next fiscal year. And along those lines of ARPA, we do have to have those funds obligated by the end of this calendar year. We still have until the end of 26 to spend it, but we have to obligate it by 1231-24. And obligating means um, either having a purchase order or an agreement. And so far we don't have either, I believe. So, but we will. Um, I think at next council meeting is gonna be the presentation of the city hall window project. Okay, um, down to expenditures overall, or at this point so far, we're at 80.16%. 80, 80. Um, so in general government, it's at 88%. That, as I mentioned, is the city hall window project. Public works is at 77%, and that's low due to unexpensed capital projects. Community and economic development's a little bit low at 93%, and I believe that's due to the ADA assessment not being expensed. Recreation and culture is at 29.97%, again, low due to unexpensed capital projects. And transfers out, so transfers out of the general fund is at 75%. Um, the, the transfer from the general fund to the equipment fund was missed in error. That was for the personal property tax reimbursement that we received in May that council authorized. Um, it hasn't been entered yet, but that's 200 and like 260 some thousand, I believe, but that will be adjusted. So overall, we are negative $341,031 
and we had amended the budget to be $1,097,079 negative. I did run the reports this afternoon because we had um, the payables that were approved today, those posted. So this afternoon, we're at $547,311 negative, um, but we still do have a lot more revenue and expenses to accrue. So we're still working through all those. Any questions on that section? Okay, so we'll go to the cash balances and investments. On this one here, the Marina Fund is negative $76. Um, there was a huge expense for the dock system back in October. And we um, were waiting until closer to the end of August to kind of finalize this fund because we did transfer some money from the general fund, but we just want to make sure that we transfer the right amount because I believe we've used up the fund balance. Um, Downtown Development Authority, that one is considerably higher than the previous year, and that was because I believe there was two payments received in there from the county for the DDA expansion. The Building Inspection Fund um, is higher than last year, and big kudos to Montiel and her department. The general fund did not have to subsidize the building inspection fund, so I'm very impressed with that. So huge thanks to Montiel. I know she's online. Uh, moving down, let's see, um, the general fund. So the general fund has $5.5 million in cash and investments. And comparing that to last year, at that point was $4.2 million. So, um, one of the major reasons is that we received a $950,000 pass-through grant. Um, that's the one for Lafarge. So it's sitting in our bank account and we're earning interest on it right now. Um, if you look at the investments, there some of them are lower than the previous year and that's because we've redeemed them in anticipation of needing that cash for projects. We were anticipating to be over a million dollars negative, so we started cashing out some investments so that money was liquid. And um, it's sitting in our sweep account and it's earning over 5.3%. So we're still doing well on that. Uh, moving down to the ARPA fund, you can see that the CDs and the treasury bills are zero. And that's because uh, we had anticipated those large expenditures in the ARPA fund and we have that sitting in cash. So we're a little bit less than last year because we used some. Um, that was for the transfer from the general fund to the ARPA fund for the fire apparatus. We still have a little bit more to transfer for, for that. Um, the, let's see. Good news on the Cemetery Trust Fund. I did just get a statement from the Community Foundation of Northeast Michigan. And since we invested, I think it was at the beginning of 22, uh, we have been negative and we can only use the investment earnings for operation and capital projects in the cemetery. We cannot use the corpus, it is untouchable. So it's been negative and we are finally positive. Um, at June 30th, it was over 108,000 positive. And we, their fiscal year doesn't end until September 30th. So at that point, they will let us know how much we can withdraw for projects. Hopefully it continues to go up. Um, the equipment fund is, is increased over last year and that is because we transferred um 550,000 from the general fund for fire apparatus um you can see that the we had we put some of it into a bond and then some of it's in cash the retirement the pension fund is a little bit more than last year not a whole lot um at march 31st 
the book value was 23.85 and now we're at 23.5 million so we're down 200 just under 282,000 the market value decreased from 29.5 million on March 31st to 29.2 million on June 30th on the retiree health care fund um, we're more we're 200,000 ish more than last year the book value at March 31st was 2.22 million. It decreased $11,518. The market value decreased from 2.63 million on March 31st to 2.62 million on June 30th. Any questions there? <laughs> Sorry, I know it's a lot of information. Um, okay, so the last one, the list of investments by fund. So this list is a lot shorter because we have redeemed probably, I think, well, a million dollars. If you look all the way at the bottom, the change from last quarter is a million dollars. So there was four, in the quarter, there was four um, investments that matured. And we, um, as I mentioned earlier, just put them into cash and have them in our sweep account. So there used to be a section on here for ARPA and there's no more ARPA investments, it's all in cash. And um, so the book value is down a million dollars and the market value is down $1,011,915 from last quarter. Um, I was gonna look into some of these investments that have lower interest rates and I haven't done a thorough analysis, but I believe that the cost is going to outweigh any benefit. I haven't moved on those yet. Anyone have questions for Anna? No, <laughs> I don't, Anna. Okay. Report. Um, entertain a motion to receive and file Anna's report. Yeah. Seat and file the uh, fiscal year 2024 report fourth quarter. I will second. Councilmember Kane? Aye. Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. And Mayor Johnson? Aye. So now we're to be an appointment of a voting delegate, delegate and alternate to cast a vote at the Michigan Municipal League annual convention. I didn't get a chance to talk to Carol today because okay. she's been sick. Um, oh. But I did talk to Aaron, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I wonder um, when do we have to make a decision on that? Um, it's set in here. Um, I think it's August 11th. August 11th. Okay. So could could you postpone it until? The next council to see if there's anyone and we can check and see if okay. there's anyone interested if that makes sense when is it um it's september um that week of september 11th or 13th yeah, maybe busy it. where is it oh at mecca island yeah <laughs> well oh, you got something coming up yeah oh, okay <laughs> september 1st <laughs> yep yeah. But, but we might know more. I, I mean, if someone's interested now, yeah. My wife has said no. <laughs> so let's, all too many things. Let's postpone this until our next meeting, which is Anna when is it? August fifth. Is that right? So, August fifth is the next meeting. Yeah. August fifth. Oh um, yeah, it's the day before election. I should know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 I'll motion that we um, tape, uh, postpone. Sorry. The appointment of the delegates to the Michigan Municipal League until August 5th. That's your motion. Mm -hmm. I'll support. Second. Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Mayor Johnson? Aye. And Councilmember Kane? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Um, so, Council Committee reports. I, I don't have anything. I was going to report on um, recycling, but it wasn't a complete accounting of cleanup day. It was only right. partial. So, and I get a full accounting of it, I'll report back. But outside of that, that I don't have anything. 
uh, hurry up and wait with the um, environmental accounting for the three Bedford Street uh, properties until such time as we get that. We can't move forward with anything on it anyway. So for the demolitions like this. But once we do, then uh, the property's down after the fire department has fun with it and such, then uh, I think it's sold over to Habitat for around a thousand or something like that okay. each. Okay. So they can get the building on that thing. We have a meeting at the end of this month on a Wednesday to hopefully have some more further info. Oh, <laughs> for my committee. Well, so here's the thing. I only have the one committee assignment and it's supposed to be an undercover committee. <laughs> so I feel it's here on undercover narcotics team. So I feel like giving an update is, you know, yeah. contrary to its purpose. <laughs> is it not? I mean, so I mean, for that reason, no comment. Okay. And that's, a, and that's fine. You can just say you attended the meeting. And, I did attend the meeting. Yeah. It was at Pompeo's. Yep. And I That's did right. not get to enjoy lunch there because somebody scheduled me four divorces that day, but um, three of which didn't even show up. So I could have had lunch there, but anyway, I did attend the meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, so we're down to new business and A is the BS and A upgrades. Steve Schultz will give us a report. All right, so over the last several years, staff has discussed updates for several BSNA modules. We investigated the purchasing of the billing module for use for our water and sewer bills, and the building department also inquired about upgrading the software that now supports the cloud, which would allow staff members to enter information in the field and eliminate tedious paperwork and double entering of information. When discussions began with BSNA, the software provider, it was discovered that all new purchases, like the billing software, and upgrades, like the building module, would be cloud-based and this would require that all modules would have to be upgraded to the cloud due to many shared databases between the software software modules. There are many improvements and options available with the cloud upgrade and city staff has participated in several demos of the software and the estimated cost to upgrade 16 modules, purchase one new module and convert all the existing billing data including training is $147,860. In the 2020, 20, in the 24-25 budget, the city had programmed 75,000 in capital projects, in information technology, as well as 25,000 in the water fund towards this project. The CIP has also programmed an additional 75,000 for the 25-26 budget year to finish this project out. This total is approximately 175,000 as staff anticipates additional prices for conversion and data and training. BSNA recently contacted staff and inquired about the project and if it was budgeted. Further, they indicated that their schedule had moved up and they foresee being able to complete almost our entire project within the current fiscal year, requiring more funding than we currently have budgeted. Since the balance of this project is programmed in the CIP for next year, I'm requesting that we move the funding proposed for next year's budget into the current budget. This would require taking 75,000 from general fund balance and increasing the capital project line item in information technology. Please see the attached budget amendment. Further, I have also attached the proposed agreement that BSNA needs to sign to initiate this project and issue the first invoice to begin work. This agreement has been reviewed by the city attorney. I believe. <laughs> I think that in you, you were fine. Yep. Okay. Um, so I have the two motions there. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll just say right out, yes, it's expensive. It's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of money. Um, going forward, it's about, not about, it's around 68000 per year. Um, right now, it's around 26000 per year. Um, the, the improvements that we see that are there are, are, you know, I mean, do they make sense and are they worth that amount of money? I, we won't know until we get into it, but some of the things we, we saw with it, the interface is greatly improved. Um, and in addition to all this, in probably three to four years, they're just going to make us do this. Um, there's no, there's no getting out of this. This is where they're going. And so um, when you do new things with them, that's what they're forcing the users to do is to start this process. Um, we 
couldn't really piecemeal it because you know you take a you take a, a a payment in cash receiving and cash receiving is hooked to this and then this is hooked to that and so it, it, it's all joined together so they all have to be part of the cloud uh together um software's expensive um you pay i mean that's most of my budget is software licenses and things so uh just to give you an idea uh microsoft licenses for all of our users is thirty two thousand dollars a year um the lean not to pick on anybody but the the lean software and the access that we have for the cloud for that is uh 15,700 a year oh so it's just it, it is it's a big ticket item and that's that's what we pay for and almost everything is going to the cloud now which speaks to the ability to upgrade easier and things like that so we're not going to have to go through all these different iterations all the time and think this is kind of where everything is headed um so Utility yeah. yeah, yeah. So we, yeah, that's a whole other issue. We we wanted to get the utility billing. It was a want before, but now it's more of a need because all of our billing is um, on a server at Alpina Power. Um, we use their software. They're going through a huge upgrade, which is going to cost some money. Um, that that particular Daffron software, um, and so we need to get this on our own. You know, on our own servers controlling it on our own. Um, the, there's an agreement, I believe, with Veolia and Alpina Power. They pay a, a monthly service charge to be, you know, share the server and things like that. So it's um, it's something that we've been wanting to do for quite some time, but now it sounds like we're kind of being forced on the utility billing end. And then, of course, that leads to the cloud, that leads to other changes. Um, oh, there was one other one I looked it up today. The New World, which is the system we came from, with all of our financials and all those things was just financials. It wasn't our billings, building software. It wasn't assessing, it was any of that. It was just financials. It was $115,000 a year. <laughs> 115. Yeah. And so when we when we came to BSNA, um, they were one of the lowest cost uh, systems when we first uh, started looking at this, when Karen did that. And if you were able to look at your email, um... Today, I did send a detailed breakout of costs from Steve. Thank you for that. I do, one question I've got is, is, uh, is, 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 is it's got to happen like this. The question is, going forward, is there any problem with the tripling of the annual cost of this for the budget for IT is like this, as far as accessibility of funds? Um. It's a cost that we're just going yeah. to have to. Just a cost of doing business, really. Yeah. I mean, we have to do it. We can't just buy. So we need to buy. We have to do something for utility billing. And they would sell us a .NET version, but the salesman didn't seem super comfortable with that. He wants us to get the full um, cloud version mm -hmm. because we're going to have to convert anyway. So he, might as well, he said he might as well just convert. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you can't just do, you can't have one module on .NET and all the other ones on the cloud, on the cloud. or whatever. Yeah. Vice versa, you can't, they have, it has to be one way or the other. Yeah. We're going to have to get them anyway. So mm -hmm. it's just, you know, I was thinking about the um, computer admin services. We're going to have to mm -hmm. adjust that. Yeah, we will. Yep. Yep. So, and then going to a completely new software would be even more expensive at this point. And the data conversion and the, right. yeah, for sure. So once we get through the upgrade, then it does, you're right, it triples our cost, but I just don't know what other choice. It's really the most economical choice at this time for us. I did just get an email today from the county treasurer's office. Um, I think they, they must have heard that we were going to the cloud possibly. Yeah. And um, they said they're still on .NET and she informed me that if there are any additional expenses related to um, reconciling, that it's going to be on us. And we understand that. Yeah. But per BSNA, it is supposed to work seamlessly between the .NET and the cloud. Yeah. Word. Data. Right. Yeah. yeah. So will they be forced to upgrade, though, eventually? Yeah. yeah. At some point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we do billing for um, water, that comes back here. That's money that we 
save. Yeah. yeah, it's it's not a lot. Um, basically, the only cost we would pull back is the the contract fee that they pay. I want to say it's seven thousand a year, something like that. So I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And actually, it's not so much Daffron as it is their server space and whatever. It's It's been an agreement that's been in place for a long, long time. So and the only I would take that out of our agreement? They would, yeah. They would take it out of their agreement and it would come off, yeah. Off our bill. Off our bill, basically, yeah. Okay. And with so that happen? They are, the water department is really looking forward to this. They've been wanting this for mm -hmm. years. Yeah. Um, it'll... It'll be it'll work so much better because we already have all the other modules and then it'll be um, I think a lot more efficient. We can run reports off it. They can run reports and it'll, it'll just be a lot better. Yeah. And will that happen this year? That's yeah. This year. Yep. This fiscal year. Fiscal year, right? Right. They're thinking by springtime they'll have everything pretty well. I think we, I was talking to White Pounds the other day, and I think we have to have it done by the end of March. Because well, something with the renewal of the DAF run. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I, I think that time frame is, it seems like it's changing all the time. So I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see, yeah. But yeah, we'll definitely have to speed them up on it and make sure they get it done. Dylan kind of wants to wait until after December. And start. <laughs> it might not be Leon's favorite time of the year. <laughs> it's gonna have to go it's like soon. <laughs> yeah. No. I. Yeah. 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 No. Maybe. Maybe they can do a lot of work in the background on some of the stuff. Yeah. You know, I don't know. We'll have to get with them. Aaron, did you have any questions? A couple. Okay. Okay. Um. So I understand that we're kind of being forced into this. You know. Like, yeah, down the road but, eventually. Yeah. But you said three to four years. So what is what is the benefit to doing it now versus waiting until we're ultimately absolutely forced into it? Um, yes. Because of the utility billing, is that that's what's speeding this whole thing up? Is we've got to get on our own utility billing, and we only have the cloud version to go to, yeah. and so then that kicks everything else to the cloud. Alpina Power can no longer do this, right. provide this service for us. So we have no. Well, they, they can, but they, it, it may change. But that's, it's an upgrade, though. Yeah. We would have to yeah. pay for an upgrade right. so with them. If we don't do this, then we have to work on a different cost. There's a different cost that have to be expended to Alpina Power to yeah. be able to send the billing out for utilities. Yeah. All right. Well, that makes sense. It's probably only going to get more expensive mm. you know, if we mm -hmm. do this in three or oh, four years. Yeah. It's probably and, going to be even more expensive. The expense yeah. would probably um, be higher than that of just maintaining the current expense and then waiting until we're forced into the upgrade, because it's sixty-eight thousand a year. Right? Mm -hmm. So what's the difference? What are we spending right now? Twenty something. Twenty. So whatever that difference, I'm well, so joke, writing joke with attorneys is they're not good at basic math. So <laughs> whatever that difference is, is that I is that an amount that then we would be seeing anyway with paying, like you said, for the the utility company because we can't. I don't know exactly what they would charge the utility. Not, there wouldn't be a yearly fee, but there'd be an upfront cost. You know, we would definitely see, I don't know if it would be this much, but it would be an upfront cost. And then we'd be doing all that to eventually have to change over from that system again anyway. So it'd be, I think, extra money spent. That's probably not necessary. Yeah. I just, I hate being pushed in a corner. It seems yeah. like you know, that's why it's just, that's a lot. I, I guess. And I understand there's a lot of things that we vote on that are a lot more than that, but it's just, like, you have to do this. And then it's going to also cost you $70,000 a year. I don't know. But so, I mean, I, I, someone has already approved. It's yeah. already in the budget mm -hmm. um, for half of the project. Yeah. But we split it over two years. But then I got to thinking, if we have it done by June 30th and we get a bill in July or August, we're going to move it back anyway. So I, we have to, I mean, if we're going to do this project, it's all going to get built in this fiscal year. We can't split it. So is that another benefit too, is that you already have, it, uh, the money, the funds allotted for next year's budget, we're just doing it all this year instead, and we don't know what the budget might be a couple years from now, so we might not have the funds to do it when we are finally forced to execute if we don't execute now. Well said. <laughs> exactly. That's, ex that's exactly it, yeah. No, no, no. Right. Uh -huh. The reason that we wanted this is because Montiel had asked for it probably yeah. a year or so ago, mm -hmm. 
um, her staff, when they they would like to take an iPad out into the field and be able to enter information right in right there on the spot instead of having to bring it back to the office and do it that way. Um, right now, we can't do it that way. They can also access information that they may need out right. in the field. Yeah, they right now if they get if they get a call for another appointment that they didn't know about when they left the office, they've got to come back to the office, collect their notes, and you know print out some stuff and then head out. So it's that's it's a. I mean, I think it's painful now to have to do this. It is, um, and it is, it is you know sticker shock when you look at it, um, but to do it down the line when you know we're absolutely forced to again, like you said, we might not be in as good a funding situation. But also, if we bid this all out, we would have to start all over with a much larger expense. Because I asked the question, you know, is there something else that we could go to? But right now, it would be a larger upfront cost, I would think. I wouldn't want to switch the whole no. thing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. It works for us. Yeah. So with that said, is there any anything that was concerning within the contract where they're monopolizing a situation with sixty eight thousand dollars, but then a few years later it'll be seventy eight thousand dollars, you know, for the upkeep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Historically, the whole time that we've been with them, their escalator's been two percent, two and a half percent each year. Okay. That's all it's been. Any more questions? How's the fund balance? How's the fund balance? <laughs> uh, well, it's going to drop um, this this year. Well, this, the one that just ended. Um, we are expecting it to be over a million dollars negative, and I'm just doing this all from memory. Um, I think we're going to drop it to about twenty eight percent or twenty six percent. Okay, that which is still above. The above our pass of our fund balance, fund balance policy. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. I don't have a problem with it. So, there, if anyone doesn't have any other questions, there's a motion. Okay. I move uh, to we approve the budget amendment attached to add 75000 from the general fund to the IT fund capital projects. A second. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Anna. Mayor Johnson? Aye. Councilmember Kane? Aye. Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Motion carried. And then? Oh, you'd like me to make yeah, the sure. All right. I'll motion, I'll make the motion to approve the agreement with BSNA for the cloud version upgrade and authorize the city's clerk to sign. Second. Councilmember Kane? Aye. Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Johnson. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Um, now we're still in new business, and B is bills to be allowed that we pulled from the consent agenda. Anna, you just want to read the total amount? Uh, yeah, I can just um, run through it real quick. Okay. Why this is happening? So um, after the agenda went out, it was realized that there was um, a payment being made to Fastenal uh, for a negative amount, which you can't do, right? Um, so we have a credit that is a more than the invoices we're paying. So it got put in there by accident, so we're pulling that. Um, and then Home Depot, um, we are getting away from using that credit card and there was still a lingering charge. And somehow when we pay PNC, they don't, like to talk anymore <laughs> it doesn't it's not working right in our system is what I mean okay. and so we're gonna pull that out of there and then we're just gonna go and make the payment out of petty cash it's only like 140 cent, 145 dollars okay. in person plus we got charged sales tax so we're gonna take that for and I get that added in. So. Well, that's why it dropped a little bit okay any questions on that so from the consent agenda to new business, bills to be allowed in the amount of $1,428,800.82. Any questions? That's your motion? Mm-hmm. A second. Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Mayor Johnson? Aye. 
Council Member Kane. Motion carried. Now we're going to adjourn to closed session to discuss a water and sewer litigation update. That's a motion? That's a motion. I'll second it. Mayor Johnson? Aye. Councilmember Kane? Aye. Councilmember Mitchell? Aye. Motion carried. This conference will now be recorded. City Council has returned to open session and there is no action, so I'll entertain a motion. Will we adjourn? Second. We are adjourned. Thank you. Third.